Hello there. I'm sorry for the gremlins that just happened there. Don't know why. I'm just going to make absolutely sure that things are working properly. My uh, streaming software was being not helpful. Let me just check. <laughs> oh, for a live stream where I don't have to do this at the beginning. It says I'm live. I just can't see anyone's chat, which is not the best. Oh, here we go. Hello, everyone. You like gremlins. I'm glad. I don't. It really annoy me. I'm going to try and find out where my chat box has gone on my software. And um, I was trying to basically trying to be the Johnny Greenwood of live streaming today with like loads of different things and windows and stuff. And I'm ready, but the software for some reason is not. I'd love to know where my chat box has gone because I love to speak to you. That's sort of the point, isn't it? Chat, chat, chat. Yes, my chat box. There it is. Woohoo. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Um, got a couple of people in the band camp chat as well. Palmer Violets and Mike Record, hello. I wonder if Michael Record is in both places. The multitasker. Um, I don't think I've even turned my phone to silent, which is silly. I have asked the dogs not to bark. Um, we'll see, see if they are going to obey me. Probably not. So yeah, it's uh, the, I keep getting these the wrong way around in my head. It's the 12th birthday of Little Battles. This one. And, um, that's the sound I'm gonna try not to have <laughs> all the way over the live stream. Um, I'm going to mute myself whenever I'm typing a lot, if I'm typing in to um, Bandcamp, but I'm just gonna, just gonna wing it. I presume that you're here because you don't mind me talking over my music. If you don't want me to talk over my music, then maybe go to the Bandcamp one and you could really be like immersed in the album, which I clearly have decided not to be for some reason. Maybe I'm just avoiding listening to it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me today. But I just had this idea this afternoon and I thought I can make that happen. And um, yeah, I just thought I can make that happen. I have this... Uh, mixer here which does all these things and I was like oh I bet I can figure out how to get the music to come into that and make it all lovely and just spend more time with you so here I am um I have explained recently to the correspondence club that I was feeling like I was failing a bit because I wasn't doing all the member events that I planned to do because I I felt like I would sit on something like this and have absolutely nothing to say but it seems like I'm fine <laughs> maybe I could be a radio DJ after all I always thought that was the most terrifying job. Not the most terrifying job, obviously, but one of the scariest sort of media jobs going because just the idea of filling all that space is like my idea of a nightmare. And yet I'm still chatting, still chatting at you. Um, please let me know where in the world you're beaming in from. I'd love to know that. And also, if, you've, if you haven't heard Little Battles before, tell me. Um, it would be so lovely to kind of not guide you through it. You can deal with it yourself but but you know like be here having this group listening session for newbies would be so cool but also if you heard it when it came out I'd love to know how you heard about it because it baffles me that anyone's ever heard anything I've done because it's so hard to kind of get get things out there so tell me some stuff and um I've got the instrumentals playing in the background <clears throat> as you might have noticed I think they're they're a good, good backdrop to me chatting. And I'll show you what the other screen is gonna be. It's gonna be this. No, it's gonna be this. <laughs> it's gonna be this. Press. I've got this little foot switch and I've just pressed the wrong foot switch. And if I press the one in the middle, it will turn off. In fact, you know what? I'm gonna disable that. <laughs> Shall I just disable the middle bit? Eek. Let's get rid of that. How do I delete it? Nah. I'll just, I'll just leave that one. I'll just try not to press the, the button in the middle. Um, yeah, that's, that's our screen. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> um. Um. <clears throat> yeah, this multi... Cannot really hear the background music. I can turn it up a bit, but it's not... Um, 
It's just supposed to be really backgroundy though because I'm talking apparently incessantly at you. It's just to set the mood. This isn't the album playback yet. The album playback. Oh, so I haven't explained anything. The album playback is being fed direct from Bandcamp and it starts on the dot at 7.30. So I have to just make sure my backing music is finished by then. So I'm keeping an eye on the time. One of my multitasking windows is the clock. So in, th in two-ish minutes, I will turn the backing music off and then we'll all be listening with the people on Bandcamp um, and on YouTube all together. <clears throat> the people on Bandcamp cannot hear me talking. This is just for the live stream. And these are just the instrumentals to Little Battles that I've put on in the background. And I made them available for free on Bandcamp um, right at the beginning of the pandemic because lots of people were working from home for the first time. And I, I thought I have nothing to do like that I can do to help really apart from offer music. So I offered those, um, all the instrumentals to all of the She Makes War albums, actually. So if you haven't got them, very, very nice to work to, apparently. <laughs> so um, pick them up, pick them up if you can, if you want at shemakeswar.bandcamp.com but we're here to celebrate and listen to this album which is large because I still have copies of it on vinyl <laughs> and this is the um, reimagined artwork for this album done by Ben the Illustrator who also did this Bjork picture and many other great things but people ask um, is my finger in the right place? People ask me about this all the time and it's by a man called Ben the Illustrator who you can find on the internet and I loved his Bjork one so much that I got him to do disarm and little battles for me so I could put them out on vinyl for the first time. <clears throat> okay, I, might, I think I'm going to turn the backing music off now so that I don't have some weird thing where it's crossing over because that would be... that would sound rubbish. Hello, everybody. I'm looking through... Oh, Richard Lendon hasn't heard either album yet. Great, this is brilliant. Okay, thank you for coming to listen this way. Hello to Tim downstairs. And um, <laughs> now listen to his two hours with She Bakes War. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I just had this idea this afternoon. I thought, why not? And there's no reason why not. Because <laughs> the internet's here. This box of stuff is here. Got the, got the albums. I already had the Bandcamp listening party set up. Why not? And I did a really lovely, I thought it was lovely. I enjoyed myself. I had a lovely time. I did a Patreon um, correspondence club event, <clears throat> just sitting here casual, playing the guitar, dressed as a white tiger, a live stream where I'm talking, and we've got some music. Oh, it's starting. Thank <laughs> you. 
here, I just didn't want to ruin the song. <laughs> dancing around that's all I'm doing what are you doing
I don't want to ruin the music by talking. <laughs> if you want me to talk, let me know. Um, I've got all sorts of stories I could tell you. I remember when we were mixing Butterflies, um, my co-producer, engineer, mixer, chap, refused to put as much reverb on as I wanted. And so I, walk, I ended up going, please, can I, can I touch the desk? And he's like, all right. And I went, Whoo. Because obviously, yeah, I have already said, if you want to just listen to the music, you can pop over to Bandcamp and do that. And ignore me completely and I don't mind. And I've, um, I'm just so proud of, <laughs> so proud of myself. Listen, the music's ducking underneath my, my chat. This is the sort of nerdy stuff I love so much. Yes. Yes, Douglas, we do need Tim Burgess to join us and applaud the use of his idea, which is a band camp thing that they've stolen off him. But I think it's really good because it's obviously a, it's a great platform. It's a great feature that I've never used before. So I wanted to do that. And then it was only because um, this afternoon I had maybe one too many coffees. And then I thought, I know, I'll overcomplicate my life for no reason. And here we are. But this is, I'm having a great time. I'm enjoying listening to this. Are we still arguing about the fact that drummers are hard work? Come on. <laughs> I went out with the drummer for four years. Six. Four years. So it, <laughs> I realised um, today I broke up with him 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago? So old. Um, lovely man, sort of, till the end sort of anyway whatever it doesn't matter um i just carried the bass drum too much so i, I will always be mentally scarred by that <laughs> thank you for um your comments about the strings this is millie mcgregor who i met through we both ended up playing in, in viv albertine's band together and i i just thought i need to get her on this so she came down for a day and did a few bits and bobs and sounds amazing doesn't she she also stars in the exit strategy video Putting a banana into my back, making me laugh all day. That's oh. Millie. Bye, bye, bye. This song caused arguments, even though it's my record and I was calling all, every single shot. There was some argument about the fact that this was really, um, like dissonant, and I was like, "Yeah." I did. Yeah, the guy who was um, recording this for me in his studio really didn't like the fact that it took this long to kick in and become not dissonant, but it's about to happen. Pay off! Makes me so nervous. Unplug it. Gone for the ghost, not for the yep, that's better. <laughs> How could I? How could I? Your beautiful face is leaving. Your beautiful smile receding. 
comments make me laugh so much. <laughs> Fundamentally, it was absolutely, we weren't collaborating. There was nothing to be said about any of it. It was just like, please record this part and then please record this part. And so this is why the, the next record we're going to listen to this evening. Um, I, I, I made it so clear with the, the guy who was um, engineering for me. Engineering means pressing record and yeah, offering creative um, things when asked and, you know, recording things very beautifully and doing a very skilled job uh, it doesn't include sticking your oar in and telling me how my song's supposed to go although that tends to happen anyway <laughs> but um yeah it was it this wasn't an easy album to record if i'm really honest i don't have the best memories of recording it i'm so proud of it but it was a little bit hard um it's hard working with people even if they have great intentions to start with <laughs> just um <laughs> Michael's question about um, drama queen tendencies and exit strategy this whole album was written over a very short period of time about quite a specific thing in my personal life um, relationship stuff and um, it's called Little Battles because I was really diminishing to myself my problems in my life more on this after this song
this song has loads of special guests on it and I'm going to quickly try and read out I thought it had a longer intro <laughs> there are backing vocals on this song by Tasmin Archer yes that one Dana Jade who now goes under the name as Muhammad Annie Gardner from the Hysterical Injury and Anna Madeline who is um, a solo artist and on track 8 which is the next yeah Chris T.T. plays the piano. Not bad. on this track is by Kat Arnie who also played on my first record Disarm she played on No Fireworks and she is an actual doctor of like science and stuff she's amazing here come all the backing vocals yes song um, that when I listened back to the mix I, in big headphones I, up really loud I, I let myself have a really proud moment of quite a tear in my eye because it just came together so well in the end and it was um, a pretty expansive orchestral sort of cinematic idea in my head that came out pretty great like, I, I listen to it now and I wouldn't change it I wouldn't re-record it whereas some of the other songs as you know I have re-recorded on Sort of reimagined albums and stuff, but um, just left this one alone. I think it's beautiful. And Chris TT is playing the piano and it's stunning. In these veins, I hunt for poetry. In this vessel, float into. Thank you. 
think that's enough chat about drums. I mean, I made this 12 years ago. I, I love what I did. I have no regrets. This is, I made creative choices and I will always make the creative choices that feel right. And it's interesting because listening to this back and how weird it is, um, it, well, it's not that weird, but you know, um, someone left me a really sweet tweet today about how this is one of his favorite albums ever, which is amazing. Um, and and it's because he said it, it sounded like someone was sort of coming like coming from another dimension and, and just describing what it was like there. I think that's kind of what he was saying. And I just thought that is what I need to hold on to with the, the record I'm recording now. And just that is a really lovely goal to have, I think. Just report back from your own planet. You know, that's what I'm going to do. daughter want to listen to blue music no this my song blue what are you trying to make me cry it's not hard to make me cry if i'm honest hi andre thanks for joining us Meanwhile, this is one too many multitasking things for me. Robert, if you're also on the YouTube uh, chat, I'd love to have a chat about this another time. I don't think I can do it while listening to, the, to my, my album for the first time in a long time, talking to people and also... Imagine what's the other thing I'm doing? I can't remember. Someone's mentioned the band Blue, and surely you know that I used to play bass for Duncan James. Surely. I was a lot younger. He's a lovely, lovely guy. I couldn't sing you a blue song. I don't know. I don't know that band really. Michael's making me laugh again. Michael Record put actual cream in his coffee today and then he tweeted about it and I said you know that's not actual cream that they're talking about and I said do we have to have a conversation about trousers and pants that's what that's about it might seem a bit weird otherwise Michael if we don't explain the whole story
remember being very proud of that verse lyric, the thing about we are homesick space stations casting hungry fingers towards the sun. I think that's the, that's the lyric. And I think Dispensable Body from Exotic Monsters carries that theme on space stations, etc. There's quite a lot of threads, I think, that go through all of the records and lyrical threads and themes and stuff. And a little bit of spoken word, which I do intend to bring back for the next record. possible in the world many people have not heard this record but we've been in touch for a long time this is the prog one so this piece of music came from a thing called the 20 song game which is by um it's an idea from the Immersion Composition Society. Do Google it, it's really interesting. And um, I just came up with this and did a full demo of it on my laptop at home, because I, I was demoing myself by this point. And um, it's basically exactly the same, <laughs> but I did it again. And this is sort of where it started in my mind, like why am I demoing everything fully at home and then re-recording everything? Because it's all me, it's all layers of me, and I wanted to keep it that way. And then, so I started thinking about improving my recording so that I could just then hand all of the stems to someone to mix and that's how I came to be doing that now basically. and I like it that way thanks for being here Ian have a good evening I'll speak to you soon Oh, and this is the first and possibly the only song I recorded using an auto harp. Because I used to stay up super late editing videos because it was my job and also was doing them for my music and stuff. And um, <laughs> occasionally I would just like at three in the morning go, I'm going to buy an instrument off eBay. So I bought an auto harp and then went, oh, well, I've got to use it then. And that's, this is the song I used it on. It's got like 72 strings, so I'm reluctant to use it again. <laughs> but it's over there. In that case, then I should use it. In this land of glory, don't tell me to simmer down. Don't say it's on my hands. This is probably the last time I ever sent um, a sort of um, a SoundCloud link to my mixed and mastered record to friends before I released the album because um, one of my friends who is very lovely and, and is a good musician and stuff he wrote back going oh I'm not sure about that one this one I was like oh I wasn't I never asked that question I just said here have a listen tell me what you think I, no, I didn't even say tell me what you think I said please tell me which songs you think could be singles and he just went oh I don't think that should go on the record and I went oh no <laughs> that is an answer to a question I will never ask in this land of Yes, Keith Richards, that makes sense. Hang on, is he Keith Richard? No, he's Keith Richards, so it's Keith Richards's book. Right, that really confused me. I thought I'd been saying it wrong my whole life. I don't 
don't say it that often. I don't want to say it wrong. Layers of meme. For some reason, that's making me think of layer cake. Is that a thing? This is me playing the saxophone. I mean, why? Why on earth? It's because... <laughs> yes, Tim is a bonkers record. <laughs> it's because... I played the saxophone at school till I was 18 years old and I got grade 8 in it and stuff and I mean it's and that sound is my sister hula hooping <laughs> because why not I recorded her hula hooping in my front room and then we put it on the record more of this more of this sort of thing this is reminding me to be weird Bonkers is the highest praise I can ever get, thank you. <laughs> oh, and that's one of those um, blow pianos. Not blow piano, harmonica. Harmon not harmonica. Blow, blow piano. I can't remember what it's called. Oh, Richard, I've kept the saxophone playing very quiet. <laughs> I sold it long ago. Terrible. I wrote this song in the back garden of the maisonette I lived in in South London that didn't have windows that closed, had windows. They didn't close. And that's how I learned three winters into that situation that um, putting bubble wrap over the windows would have made me a little bit warmer in the previous winters. London, London life. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. <laughs> yeah. I do often wonder what it is that brings you back to me. <laughs> People who are here, like, I don't know if I really need to know it, but I, I sometimes wonder, because I'm just, I'm just doing my thing, and that's that. <laughs> weird and that's that's great isn't it you said it's typical of me you said i shouldn't have gone these shields and daggers don't keep us safe I forgot I played recorders on this as well. <laughs> I play a mean recorder, what can I say? But you have to place it in the mix in the right place, otherwise it's too much. Putting ukulele and recorders in the same song is a brave move, I think. Oh, oh, oh. 
also are at the last song of the actual record. And this is rain recorded out of the back window of that um, awful drafty maisonette I was telling you about. But that was my first ever home studio. It was a back bedroom and I had it just for music. And it was Mr. Benji's bedroom because my boyfriend at the time didn't like him sleeping on the bed. We're hunting Get lost, mate. It's heart though. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah, we'll definitely do a Q&A between albums. I'm going to keep this live stream going because if I don't, it's going to stop, isn't it? Like everything's going to explode. I'm just going to let the people on Bandcamp know what's going on so they can join us perhaps. So this is a home recording demo of In This Boat. In this boat I look for signs of morning In these sails of bond I cannot keep this bit of guitar. Come 
I've had such fear that this album's so long that, that like the two live stream, not, not the two live streams, the two listening parties are going to cross and I'm going to be like, blah, 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 with all of this stuff going on. But I think it's going to be just about, okay. Whew. This was an idea I had, which never happened, um, to have a recording challenge for other people. So to give people the stems or well, not the stems, but to, or maybe the stems are included in the, the Bandcamp download, maybe it are. I wanted it to be a musical challenge so people could use the backing stuff from the, um, from the first track on this record and react to it in their own musical way. But I obviously didn't communicate that very well or to very many people because not a single person ever did it. But if you're wanting to do that, download the thing from Bandcamp, get it, just make something and then send it to me. I'd love to hear it. But this is all of the stuff that, this is all the field recordings and now I'm talking over it, but I'll be quiet now. Some drums from Mexico City. A steam train. New York subway. Steam train. Transit sounds. New York City breakdancers, it was so awesome. I, I had my Zoom recorder and I was just walking around in New York and um, they got on the subway. That's it. Okay. Haven't crossed listening parties. That's good to know. Um, ask me anything. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to I'm going to put um, instrumental tracks from the, our next album. If you have to go, obviously, that's fine. <laughs> Please don't um, think I'll think badly of you. Why would I? Of course I won't. Of course not. This is again, not the listening party. This is backing music so that it's not gone all completely silent and weird. I'm just going to let the band campers know what's going on here. And, um, whew, yeah. I actually like listening to these instrumentals. Perhaps I should have them on in the background occasionally. <laughs> Okay, I've done all my notes. <laughs> yes, yes, Douglas. Have a little rest. I might actually just um, go and have a moment. I think I've got, yeah, five minutes. Need to get a bit more water. So um, chat amongst yourselves. <laughs> Direction of travel is next. It looks like this. BRB, lots of love. See you in a minute.
Lol. Hello, I'm still here. <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> Don't worry, that wasn't my inbox. My inbox is um, full of crap sales emails. Oh, wait a sec. Right. First of all, I haven't checked in at all on this. On uh, Patreon, but it's okay. No one's chatting to me there. Turn that off. I'll confuse myself a little less. Just a little less. Then we're just dealing with Bandcamp. And yeah, next record then. <laughs> so this one was my first recorded in Bristol. Um, produced by me, mixed by Dan Austin, engineered by TJ Allen at J&J &J Studios. And we also, also went to... Oh, nope, starting. man is here <laughs> oh yes I see the joke about how I thought this album was louder and it's called Drown Me Out very good yes there's real drums on this album you'll all be pleased to know <laughs> um, I can't remember who played them one sec oh it's inside hold on I'm gonna open this I know that Andy Souter plays on many of the tracks. Also, Clive Deemer is on at least one of the tracks. He plays in Porter's head and Radiohead. And it's very nice. Very lovely man. Andy Souter's on this track, yeah. Clive Deemer only plays on track four, which is Alone.
now, but it's because it, it needed to be said here. It, it was appropriate here, and I've written a piece even about why there is a swear word in this song. I'm not going to kiss your cold shoulder again. I swear all the fucking time. It's just that in, in speech, in everyday life, all the time, so fun. But I always try and find something a bit more intelligent to say in songs. That's all. Apart from this. It's a mood, isn't it? It's just a mood. This is the mood. This isn't Tim's live stream, but maybe one day he'll tell you how he felt when he heard all my entire back catalogue when we got together. Maybe, maybe he will. the video for this in my living room on a bank holiday Monday and uh, my drummer didn't take the, like, the kick drum out of the drum you don't, you don't need to have the, the kick pedal in the drum obviously it's not, it's not a gig but my next door neighbour Terry was very nice about me making music or didn't know because he was quite hard of hearing and the reason I know this is because one he was very old and, and it was clear that he was and we chatted and stuff and I had to shout but also because he would blast Dame Vera Lynn through the houses. <laughs> it's a semi-detached house. And I never complained because I knew that one day I'd have to play drums in the living room. This is what an awesome husband looks like. This is what it says on here. Up quiet in deep I shudder while you sleep You're not making sense Are you finished with me yet? It? I like this one. <laughs> the strings on this um, were played by a couple of friends of mine. And in fact, I just put um, a link to this like guest starring video that I made because um, we went for a whole day to Metway Studios, a level of studio, at the end of 2014, and I had a bunch of people come down and play, and it was so stunning. And they're making that, those weird noises. My dear absentee, this won't end well for me. I don't know if this was the first time I got into my little music box sounds, but I've never stopped loving them since. So I stand alone. Genuinely haven't listened to this for so long. I'm just enjoying it. Oh, the solo I forgot.
my first guitar solo. And I only ever wanted to do guitar solos that have a real purpose. Whenever I played this, I, d I did play um, quite a few gigs with a band on this sort of album cycle thing. And um, my guitarist, my, you know, my other guitarist, so it's always seemed slightly offended that I wanted to play that solo, but I was like, well, I'm not doing all the other things at that moment, and it's mine. <laughs> I want to play. My webcam box. I'm so aware that I'm just like sitting here nodding my head to my own music. I haven't listened to it in a long time, okay? Maybe Tim can stretch out his uh, big fat slippers so you can see them because they're kind of amazing. His feet aren't that big. <laughs> Tim's reserving his moves for his own album playthrough, I think. This is Clive Deemer, he of Porter's Head and Radio Ed fame. Lovely, lovely man. We recorded this at Adrian Utley's studio. That doesn't mean that I'm fancy or that I know anyone <laughs> in Porter's Head other than. Well, okay, I know a couple of them. Um, it was exciting anyway. on this <laughs> it's probably the loudest one because I was trying to impress him <laughs> he can't hear you yeah beautiful singing voice and some other other people are on there too bandmates and such at the time of wisdom ha ha um <laughs> i wrote this chorus on the station platform at bristol parkway traveling to and from a job i was doing for about eight months and i always um got myself through times like that oh wait so this is a cool like listen to this so this was going to be a b-side i can't i don't know why um i just i don't know um and so dan austin who mixed this record and it was the first album he mixed for me with me um he just sort of went really far with that in his in his opinion like with all of the reverbs and stuff like because he's like oh it's not gonna be on the record anyway and then i was like well it should be on the record now because you've made it sound amazing and let's do that to everything else as well Yeah, so um, I, I suppose I was, because I was doing that job, we all have to do jobs, obviously, to get paid. 
Um, and But at the time I was sort of like getting through it by telling myself I was sort of cosplaying at being an office worker. <laughs> and the song was sort of about that. <laughs> yes, Rodney. I waited a long time on that station platform. If your motor unravels Then we'll mend the machine If the world disappoints you of accidentally nicking songs I do find it weird that we're able to write music that is different from other people's music and like surely the slow puncture chorus or any any of the choruses I've ever written exists somewhere else and someone's just gonna wait for me you know if, if I ever got big enough someone would slap me with a <laughs> with a copyright notice or something but <laughs> 10 points to anyone who can guess which Chris Isaacs song <laughs> you can sing over the end of this song and I always sing over the end of this song when I listen to it. I'll leave that with you. If you're scared of the shadows Then I'll stay through the night Please don't leave me yet We're all part only exists on here because I um, I sent the song to my friend Simon Goff to put violin on and he wrote these parts that had no melody so I had to fill in the space and um, I'm, I'm glad he did that now. there I have told this story before um, when I thought my dad might die um, the first thought I had was but I haven't handed you a baby to hold I don't want kids never wanted kids still don't want kids not having kids no kids but that was my first thought bit weird um, happily he's still with us very much so and um, I don't know what he thinks about the song he is not the kind of man to tell me I don't think, but I'm pretty sure it still makes my mum cry every time. Yes. <laughs> I don't mean that horribly, it's just obviously um, to evoke any emotion from anyone is, is a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Has anyone ever approached me about songs in soundtracks? I wish, Douglas. I wish. I wish. They didn't approach me and me go, no thanks. <laughs> Fingers crossed. One day. One day. I'm in the world. Yes, Darren. <laughs> Yes, Darren. I'm pretty sure I've put um, parts that you can sing that song over in several songs. Yeah. Reduce my world to things that I have worked for. There's a line about Tim in this. My wounds, I wonder if I can mend the ear. Awake, no sleep till I. Yes, Mark, the video for Paper Thin was filmed in Boston, but also in New York, because basically... Ooh, I don't want to talk over Tanya's thing. <laughs> I burned out along the way On a sunny day With threat of thunder, threat of rain Ooh, I crashed down I came round to devastate something on my screen I heal myself with friends and conversation sometime alone I was trying to kick someone out sorry <laughs> some done um i was told yes we um i knew i needed to go to boston to have tanya in the video because that's where she lives and tim and i um wanted to go to new york together so we did that and then we um, went to boston on the bus yeah Duncan, it's not melodica, it's um It's Omnichord. And I smell roses Also under the desk. All this is us. Tim's left, he must have gone to have a little, little cry. Let's do Nick, I did have a song used in a film once, but only once. <laughs> yeah, it was very exciting. Crash down, I came round to devastate. Anyway, I let my skin grow paper thin.
you, Nicola. Now every morning when I wake The strings on this track are by Simon Goff and Nicole Robson and they're actually arranged by Andrew Skeet who's um, has been a friend of mine for years. He um, composes scores for huge films and has done stuff with Suede and stuff. I just met him at a music event and we got on really well and used to talk a lot and, and go for coffee a lot in London and he for a very nominal fee that I forced upon him, created the beautiful arrangement for Stargazing. And a friend. We were stargazing. You thought I was amazing. You said we had time. You don't know you. This man's size storm I don't believe anybody anymore Cause you're less than a friend Yeah, me and Tim made this video together Mostly in our house And also up on Troopers Hill in Bristol Because I wanted to be waiting for the aliens to come and take me Almost like begging them to remove me from the planet and so I tried to find all different ways to <laughs> to get them to come and find me. And yes, my neighbour thought it was very strange standing on the front doorstep with a I was with an astronaut's helmet <laughs> borrowed from a friend. <laughs> they thought it was so weird when we left when we left our house to move to our next house. I'd never. I'm not a show off about my music. I took an album round to my next door neighbour and just said, oh, by the way, this is what I made next door. And she's like, oh, yeah, I heard you doing it. She'd never said anything. This is on the other side from Terry, the, the man who's, who's hard of hearing. And um, as we drove out of the estate to our new home, 20 minutes away, um, she blasted Cold Shoulder from her huge sound system in the back garden. It's great. Great day. And correct, there was a different track listing um, in the pledge release 2015, no, 2016, 2015 release. Years, numbers, don't know. Just let it die. I like that. This is one of my favourite bass lines, it's such a weird time signature. I think it flows nice. Slow down, sunshine Don't let the truth cloud your mind Electricity is fading quietly Blood Thank you for knowing things, Richard. I'm just so confused by dates. Oh yeah, Little Battles is 12, not 8. Ah. I 
remember recording the demo to this in my house and um, sending it to my new boyfriend and going, listen to this, it's hilarious, because I've made all these squeaky little funny guitar lines, mostly towards the end. And having listened just li now, listen to, listen to Little Battles, I can hear that kind of style coming out in that record and then it's being expanded upon here. That's a teacup. <laughs> me putting my cup down on the mantelpiece in my little studio room in that house to sing, because I recorded all the vocals for this myself for the first time. All of the instruments were done. Actually, I might have recorded some ukulele at home as well, but most everything else was done in a studio in Bristol called J&J. &J. Tim went, I'm so happy. <laughs> Dan's question about stargazing, I don't know what you mean. I've always played that one acoustic or just chords. And there is acoustic guitar in the recording of stargazing, but maybe it's so low because of the strings and stuff that it's not so noticeable. first song um, where I wrote it and then I got a tattoo based on it and then I put the record out. <laughs> oh, 
Guardian Swallow. myself to a big loud listen through to all of the records on the big speakers sometime sometime soon before I dive back into the next one suave bass thank you That's lovely Good praise my favorite bits coming up now I met when Martin McCarrick, the cellist, was playing with Kristen Hirsch and I just got chatting to them at an in-store gig they did together. Kimberly's on the violin and Martin's on the cello and they're just stunning. They make such incredible music. And I'd already written the whole bass line and all the chord changes and stuff and just sent it to them and they were like, okay, we'll just follow that then. <laughs> it's so stunning. And then the drums get more and more reverby towards the end. More and more far away. Answer your questions. No, the synths are not backwards. They're just, that's just how they sound. I remember posting a, a little clip from the studio of me playing that synth line on, on Facebook or something as I was doing it and just sort of, to sort of like, people would just seemed really confused. Like, oh yeah, that's not the kind of music you make. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it certainly is. Second guest singer of the album. Mark Chadwick from The Levelers. He invited himself on this album after I toured with him. I was delighted, obviously. So now we call different 
feet. Duncan, I love that description. That's really smart. You're so happy. Now I don't come back. So give me a sign. I can't decline. Darling, it's time to be unkind. There's too much to take. This whole part, all the lyrics and everything, I wrote wandering around in London. I recorded it into my phone. And then Dan did some really cool stuff with the, the piano on this is played by my friend Jay Chakravorty. And um, Dan pulled a load of the notes around in this section. It's really beautiful. Give me a I'm now wondering why I haven't performed this on my ukulele shows lately or on live streams. Did I forget this existed? Oops, I used to play this all the time when I did my in-person shows and I always really enjoyed doing that bit in the middle and then really holding on the silence. That annoying way so people don't know if they should clap or not and then going into the loop part. of weird songs <laughs> this came from um i don't even know what notes they are i was just playing on this keyboard a juno gi keyboard that i have the first one i ever had it was a present from a very kind fan who bought it for me off amazon along with this microphone i'll always be very grateful thank you so much i didn't have any stuff and it really helped me get started with recording at home and i just was playing notes on um on this keyboard, they're not chords or anything. They're just, just you know, the, the, the inbuilt sound has all of that stuff. <laughs> Can't speak. And I just started singing over the top, and that was that, really. I suppose this is the magpie heart of this album, in a way. The drum, I'm sure everyone needs to know, <laughs> on this is my marching drum, which is... Nothing will keep I can't see it, it's over in the corner. Wrong, played by me. I can get the marching drum back out for the next record, I think. I'm undone, but you want me now Before I sink to the bottom And all of 
think it's obvious that Dan Austin added so much to this record. Um, but in my memory, Little Battles is so much further behind it than it actually is when I listen now. So that's really good. Because <laughs> um, I'm always trying to make the best album I can. I'm always trying to make the, um, the album I would make now if I had never made an album before. Because I'm not trying to do like the next one from wherever. But of course it's going to be a natural progression because it's me and I'm just going to try and be true to that and whatever that weirdness is that you know we're talking about how we're all weird in our own ways I can only be the only one of me you know I played that cymbal as well I'll have you know I have a bit of drums I like to play the drums Michael, I love that the most. I don't take forever and ever, but I am very particular about the parts, yeah. Sweetheart. Always winds me up or has wound me up in the past when people put the backing vocals or the so-called backing vocals way below the lead vocal because I'm trying to make chords out of the vocals. They're an instrument to me. Is not and it's really satisfying when you get it, just how you want. It's like a puzzle coming together. It's one of my favourite parts. This is Martin McCarrick again doing a solo cello performance in this one. And that is just fine. Don't call. No, I'm talking shit. It's it's Nicole Robson. Right. Martin McCarrick is doing a solo in Paper Thin. That's what Ready it is. to reply. I wish you the best. Thank you, Michael. Now, did you notice that in that for me, no reverb, totally dry, that's on purpose. I asked Dan to do that because I wanted there to be a silence and for everything to be very like dry and present and like very intimate in the ears and then to go back into this sort of dreamy world. I love doing stuff like that. You might start noticing that now and leaving silences and stuff. So it's a big breath before you go back into the next part. I think that's really important. Jay's playing piano on this again. He's just so great. If you haven't listened to his solo music yet, it's stunning. So stunning. I had a lovely long catch up with him recently and I'm going to get him on the next record. appreciate that comment Michael yeah I do try to be the bigger person especially if it's going to really piss the other person off more than if I was horrible <laughs> I wish you the Thank you. 
love. And it goes dry again. again. Now this is to lift you back up again from the sad doldrums that I just put you in. Sorry. I did try and have it to be at least a kind ending to the record, if not particularly uplifting. I definitely try to do more hopeful ends now. You might have noticed. That's what the, what's why the synth line was needed, by the way, Michael, I was asking before. Thank you for saying that, Richard. I'm very, very pleased that you're here. I'm not going to kiss your I'm delighted that you're all here. It's very lovely. Benji will always be with us because he's on here and on the back of exotic monsters. What's coming for me? Ex-girlfriend or STD? Don't call me baby. But no, he shouldn't be this much to me. You know I'm not stupid, so why don't you tell me what? Obviously, I put the synth line on to cover up the terrible, awful disgusting swearing so that it could get played on the radio this song and then but I did it way after it had been put onto um, CDs and, and no it wasn't put onto vinyl at the time but before it's after it was put on CDs and I, it's a shame really because the synth line's really cool and it would have been nice if it was on the album version but that's why it's not I do really feel like a radio broadcaster because this is what happens when they talk over things, isn't it? That the sound ducks. <laughs> I was very proud of those um, backing vocals at the time as well. that you're here. Lazo and I met in Germany. Are you still making your music as well? Put a link here if you are. I'd love people to check it out. I'm not going immediately, so if you want to talk to me for a few moments, <coughs> feel free. Um, <laughs> that's a weird way to say it. I'm just going to say bye to the Bandcamp people. I think there's at least three people over there. So it's a roaring success. Um, <laughs> it is. It's, of course it is. Ask me any questions now and I'll say bye to these. Hopefully they'll come over here. If they haven't done. Maybe they're here as well. I don't know what's going on. Uh, BRB. And I'm back in the room. What's the next album anniversary? <laughs> Have to ask G Cal Douglas. The reason I decided to sit down and do this epic double thing is because every year I go, oh, I've totally forgot Direction of Travel and Little Battle's birthdays. 
they're next to each other. So what I did last year is I put into my Google Calendar a recurring appointment for myself to remember those birthdays. That's why I even knew. Um, so honestly, I don't know. <laughs> What's the next one? I know Desam is I know Desam is September the first. I can tell you, Exotic Monsters is May. May. Uh, one in a thousand is March, February. Thank you. <laughs> um, what other records are there? Brace for Impact. can not tell you. I need. Uh, I'll just. I'll have to look. I'll look. I will look now. In my calendar. I'm not showing you my calendar. It's just full of too much stuff. Um, brace for Impact. Oh, the fifth of October. Hmm, that's ages away. Yeah, I tend to tend to put things out in in um, spring or autumn. So um, there's, there's no summer releases. <laughs> Happy summer releases. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I will let you know. I'll let you know. Hey Tim, have you written that album yet? No. Hey Tim, have you written that album yet? He says, I played on my guitar a bunch. Um, <laughs> he, um, he's made a wonderful record and I have to make mine and then I can hassle him about his. It seems to keep happening, that one. Um, Andrew B, thank you very much. Please do delve. When people ask me which album to start with, I don't really know. I think if you'd never heard my music before, I would say Exotic Monsters. That's like the most recent just me expression and then I think working backwards would make sense that's probably what I do if I if I hear someone and I really like what I've heard I'll work I'll listen to that thing and then I'll work backwards gradually from there because I think I wouldn't send someone to the start and say listen to disarm I like disarm still oh, well, I love disarm still but the most sort of like she makes warness I ever got was brace for impact I think and after I'd done that, I wanted to switch things up, hence doing that. Um, so I think, yeah, if you if you liked Exotic Monsters, then go Brace for Impact, Direction of Travel, Little Battles, and then maybe to some. And then and by that point, you'd be like, oh, that's oh, that's cute <laughs> or something. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's the way around I would do it. That's always my answer. Um, if you have a different answer, please say so, because you're the ones who, you know, are here, <laughs> who aren't me. Um <laughs> Why do Americans say cream in coffee when they mean milk? Possibly the same reason that they call trousers pants. Confusing, isn't it? <laughs> Douglas, I don't know what the awkward question was. I haven't had any... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, no. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I haven't had any awkward questions. Um, I'm very happy to answer all questions. There was a guy who popped up who's, who had a really weird sleazy name and was going, hey, do you like rock? So I was trying to get rid of him, but then... Um, it was quite hard to do that so uh, in the, the corner of my eye here. But got rid of that guy. Um, if he's a legitimate fan, then maybe he needs to <laughs> look, look at what his handle is. It's pretty weird. Um, when do you decide on the instruments for a song? While writing or recording or a mysterious third option? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. While recording, actually is the answer because while writing it could be on anything it's usually on my little acoustic guitar my three-quarter size Yamaha thing that's just really easy to pick up and play I don't I'm not very good at the acoustic guitar so <laughs> it's the only one I can do but because obviously I can hear it uh instead of having to plug an electric guitar in a guitar guitar electric guitar in and faff around plugging it into stuff Ugh, can't be bothered. I just want to grab something and play. So it's it's most yeah most stuff is written on the acoustic guitar, and then when I then go okay, this is a song I'm going to record now. I go I am recording that song today in this robot voice for some reason. Then I will decide. I normally would put a guide track down of guitar so that there's chords, something to sing over, guide vocal, make sure the arrangement is correct, and then I'll go but down to you know drum machine <laughs> I love the drum machine <laughs> and then bass and anything else anything else I fancy I can normally sort of hear in my head where it's going to go I might try a few things whatever see what happens if it's written on the ukulele it tends to be ukulele is a central thing and then I'll add stuff to that um 
and that's how that is how I've written a bunch of stuff on piano and because I'm not a pianist um I haven't finished them but as I said I was talking to my friend Jay who's a beautiful pianist and a beautiful human and so mm, I don't know I don't know if it's for this album might I might do a piano album where I have more time to develop those into something more expansive um has listening back driven some inspiration for pen friend too it has actually yeah I think it's really good to do these things to to to, to one to celebrate milestones absolutely and, and in a very humble and non-arrogant way um in a, hopefully a generous way like I wanted to do this so that we could spend this time together and listen to stuff uh not so people could applaud me and make me feel good although that is also nice thank you very much um but just to to give some time and if I hadn't set this up I probably wouldn't have sat here and listened to them you know and so for me yes it's definitely been interesting because um it's very easy to dismiss all the things we've done in the past as rubbish or long ago or I couldn't do that again or so many different things and now I'm just listening going I'm proud of me back then even though things weren't easy and you know I'm in a much better position in many ways certainly emotionally <laughs> and everything so wise now um, than I was then I'm proud of myself for pushing through and making these things happen because um it's really hard to make stuff. It's really hard to finish stuff. And it's really hard to share stuff and to keep sharing stuff. And the, the other reason I wanted to share this stuff today is, yeah, these albums are kind of old. One of them is 12 years old. That's a long time. That is a long time. I was li I was living in two cities ago then. I was, uh, I was 12 years younger than I am now. That's a long time. And eight years is a long time as well. And I think though that when we make things... <laughs> that are that exist in the world hopefully they're going to exist exist for a long time maybe probably after me I'm not saying they'll be huge <laughs> when I'm not here anymore I just mean that the CDs will unfortunately not have eroded into the earth in a in a pleasant way so they'll anyway there'll be music around it'll be online or in space or something and so I think referring back to things isn't bad <laughs> it's just going well here's another thing most people in the world haven't heard I still very much believe in it and I'm proud of it and I think it sounds good. So I'm very happy to keep sharing it because it's it's not just, you know, you don't just put something out and then that's it forever and move on, never mention it. That's sort of crazy. Like if I'd written novels, I don't think I would be going, oh, ignore all those, I'll write another one. <laughs> so um, I just, I'm saying that because maybe it's so obvious to you, but I think some people are kind of like, why are you still banging on about that old stuff? Well, because I'm proud of it and it's it's part of the journey. It's part of the whole thing. So that's why. Um, Tim Parsons started with Obey Robots and Exotic, then everything she makes for and that worked for me. Cool. I'm really glad. Yeah, of course, wherever you come in at, that's where you start, isn't it? So if, of course, if, if people have heard of my work through Obey Robots, then absolutely wonderful. I'm really glad that you enjoyed that record too, because I'm very proud of that as well. But when I I, when I am asked which one of mine to listen to first, I always say Exotic Monsters because I made that on my own. So that's the most sort of me. Um, and Lazo, of course I remember you. We hung out in Germany. <laughs> um, it's really lovely that you came. Thank you. And do check out his music. It's brilliant. Um, yeah. What gave you this brilliant idea? Do you mean um, having a listening party, my, Mark? Well, I really loved doing the the um the um listening parties online before um when the records came out but it's just lots of typing and so s same thing with Bandcamp it's it's um just chat as you saw it's just chat which is very nice but it's um it's just not so immersive and I thought that it might be really cool to do it this way and I have this thing called I'm not plugging this thing it's it's called a gig caster it's a little it's a mixer plug stuff into it comes out it, it just makes things a lot easier so my live streams I've been able to do loads more live streams much more consistently because it's really easy to set it up the sound is consistently good yes there are, are always some gremlins that happen like with the streaming software was being a, a, a dickhead earlier but um it's just really consistently good so um it's easy for me to do stuff and so I, I was like oh I know I can get computer audio into here so this afternoon I just tested it out got all the levels done and um I'm really glad you've enjoyed it. I've had a much nicer time doing this than I would have done just typey, typey, typey into 
Bandcamp, although I did feel like I was neglecting Bandcamp people a little bit because I couldn't do all the things, but I prefer to do this thing. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, Carl, that's really sweet. Thank you very much. And thank you, Louise. Thank you, Douglas, Mark, Lazo, Douglas again, Andrew, Chandra, John, Gecko Wizard, brilliant name, Tim Parsons, Mark Williams, Andrew B, Palmer Violets, Mr. Zenico, Richard Bennett, Michael Record, and everyone, everyone for being here. A lot of you are members of the Correspondence Club. Thank you so much for doing that, for being part of this really cool team, powering the making of new music and videos always. And if you're not and you would like to join us, there's just an absolute shed load of music that you can download straight away, including both of these albums. Um, go to patreon.com forward slash penfriendrocks and you can find out all about that. Um, you can click into my uh, YouTube channel and subscribe. Well, you must have done because you're talking to me because I had to do that because do you know what? That weird spammy guy, he must have clicked to subscribe and then waited for five minutes and then started trying to ask me things about, do you like rock? What a weirdo. So strange. Anyway, I'm going to go because I've been sitting here for a long time. And so have you. Thank you so much. Do go and check out um, the Patreon um, Correspondence Club home if you haven't already. Yes, there's a video premiere next Thursday for those who might not know. Thank you, Douglas. I remembered that yesterday when I looked at my calendar and went, oh, yeah, I'm doing that. But it is pretty much finished, so it's going to be fine. But I, I'd forgotten. Um, that's why calendars are very good. Anyway, I'm running out of steam. Thank you so much. Lots of love to all of you. Safe home. <laughs> and I'll speak to you soon. Minty Zoneling. You can rewatch this almost immediately. Don't worry. But thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, all of you. I'm going to go. Speak soon. <laughs>